What's up guys? Um, a lot of times if you get someone, maybe a felony stop, you get them proned out and they're being compliant, people tend to kind of nonchal on it. They'll come in, they'll be nonchalant about going to handcuffing. The reality of that situation is, you know, you got your gun drawn on this guy. This could be a really dangerous person. You know, you don't want to be nonchalant with them. So one thing you can do, Mike's over here. I get him in a felony stop, you know, first thing I'm gonna do, hands up, turn around. So I don't want him looking at me. I want him facing away from me. From here, I'm gonna get him to a position of disadvantage. So get on your knees, on your stomach, hands up by your side. Now, as he's out there, I'm gonna start working my way in. Get your hands behind your back. Don't move. So as I'm coming in, I'm keeping my gun drawn on him. Because at this point, we're committed to him. So, God forbid I'm ever by myself in this situation. I'm keeping this on him as long as possible. A lot of people tend to kind of just be nonchalant, go start cuffing him up from here, no big deal. But one good way to kind of go about this situation is I'm gonna come in and plant my foot right on the inside of his ribs. From here, still have my gun drawn. I'm gonna staple that hand and then drop this knee right on his tricep. Now I have that one arm controlled already. Control that wrist. Once I have control of that wrist, now I have him controlled. And I can put that away and I can start working my handcuffing. Get my cuffs out, can control that wrist, pop that cuff on. From here, I can transition into that shoulder, get this control, and then work to get that cuff on. Um, the pressure I apply here is never really any pressure that's gonna get that person escalated again. It's always gonna be very light pressure, just enough to control them, but not enough to make them think, hey, this guy's hurting me. So good control position right there, just to kind of not get to that nonchalant phase. 